go ahead. (laughs) From Moses himself, that the woman and from the women's from from Eve's line, that eventually from a woman would come uh, divinity. Stop! Stop! (laughs) (laughs) Oh my goodness! I don't know. It's funny. You're listening to (laughs) the content or watching you say stop, stop. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Welcome to Tanakh Talk. I'm your host, William Hall, broadcasting live from Kingsland, Texas, USA, with another episode of Two Guys Exploring Christianity with my buddy, Greg Slowride McBride. That name has taken to you quite well, and it's becoming your new th- motto, I think. Um, <laughs> I-, I went back well, and watched the video uh, that Bruchy sent, uh, the Bruchy on the Bruch- View thing, uh, where she had interviewed me and she had mentioned your name. Uh, and she didn't call you Grace. She called you Slow Ride McBride. <laughs> I was like, that's so cool. That is so cool. Yeah, yeah, well, I've got to do some testifying before the Supreme Court coming up, and they call me Slow Ride up there in Washington, D.C., too, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Intermediate. <laughs> Leviticus. Oh. Thank you, David. Cats out there. You're your biggest fan out there. Cool. Oh, in fact, yeah, da- yep. And cool. oh, in fact, yeah. David David messaged me last week, fiending for some slow ride, and I'm like, dude, I'm sorry, we schedules and blah blah blah. He's like, man, come on, I really rely on the show. <laughs> We've had terrible scheduling. He's cool. Terrible, he's, he, terrible, he's, terrible. I know, right? Oh. And so glad we were able to get oh. this one in. Um, for, yep. for people who aren't watching semi live, meaning in the next week or two, it won't really matter to you anyway. So we won't get into the details, any details now. So okay, so uh, today you have uh, you have chosen to uh, first of all give me give give me a little background on uh, give the viewers a little background on uh, this Jeff uh, Jack Hibbs uh, because this Jack is Hibbs. this is yes. kind of what this show is about. Some uh, yes. YouTube clips that you had uh, you had told me about. And uh, Baruch, yep. he had sent me the links on. Um, and so, but give us some b- before this context of who this Jack Hibbs is, and okay, um, and and why we're why we're going to address his comments in today's show. Okay, well, uh, Ruchi Reese is a uh, podcaster, Ruchi. and she did a Ruchi. interview of. Rookie, rookie, R- sorry, yes. Not, well, not, not, no, that's like rookie. She's not a rookie. She's a professional. Be a bruch, oh, yeah. Bruch. It's like Baruch. It's like a. Oh, a, okay. Bruch. Okay, you yeah. say it and I'll bruch. say Reese because that reminds me of Reese. <laughs> Mrs. Cups. Reese's Pieces. <laughs> Mrs. Reese's. Hey, you got slow ride. <laughs> and if you like Reese's Pieces and if she does, she'll appreciate that. <laughs> there you go. Very good. Anyway, bruch she Reese. did, uh, she did a podcast with Rabbi Singer and. Um, this, this Jack Hibbs, he's a very, very, uh, popular Christian preacher. Um, speaker Johnson had him say the prayer to open our current Congress. Uh, that's how, mm. that's how important he is. And he did a podcast, uh, I believe it's called, um, his return. That was the name of the podcast. And he had some things to say, Mm -hmm. and we're going to, uh, I, okay, I tried for almost six weeks to contact him through various means. I got to one of his lieutenant preachers, um, Pastor Dennis. Uh, I had a conversation with him a month ago. And that was the only one. He promised me that he would get back to me and see what see what was going on with this podcast. I sent him I, I gave him his final voicemail today on Wednesday. And I said that I was going to go ahead and just discuss Pastor Hibbs podcast on on the show here because I don't have any other option. He like all of these guys, he has a lot of layers between the unwashed masses that I am and the lofty elevated position that he is in. Sure. I, I promised, um, pastor Dennis in the voicemail that I would be kind. Uh, I don't, I don't know Jack Hibbs. Um, he, I I promised that I wouldn't be unkind like Jack Mm. Hibbs is to fellow preachers on his podcast. 
um, uh, he calls them names, actually, not, not rabbis. He calls fellow uh, eschatologists names. So I promise that I won't call him any names on the show. I just call people names before the show. <laughs> in, in private. <laughs> in private. <laughs> so you've got a clip here. There, there's three segments that we're going to look at. Okay. Um, and you've got a clip, so we'll play that clip. All right, so it's five minutes long or a little bit more. So what I'll do is I'll play yeah. it along the way, and you just tell me when, yeah. when to pause. Yeah, because yeah, um, I might stop it pretty quick. I'm not sure. Okay. You'll probably get the gist of it pretty quick. Okay. So All this right. is Jack Hibbs from, I think it's China, Chino Hills. It's in Southern California. Okay. So. And to why are we followers of Messiah? Foundationally, it has nothing to do about the New Testament. It's all about the Hebrew Old Testament. It's all about Moses, believe it or not. That's Stop right there, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's a bald-faced lie. Um, I'm, and I'm not, I'm, okay, I, I'll take that back. Pastor Hibbs is mistaken here. Um, and he is, I, I made it very abundantly clear that he was free to instruct me as to where Moses and the Hebrew Bible talk about Jesus the Messiah. I there if you've watched this show for very long, there is no place, not one place from from Genesis to Malachi where Jesus is told to that where we are told that Jesus will be the Messiah. Not one. So again, I don't I don't have any animosity towards Pastor Hibbs. I think he's probably about my age. You know, he wears a plaid shirt. You know, how can you be upset with a guy that wears a plaid shirt? <laughs> and, <laughs> and, but he's mistaken. He is free to respond to show me where in the Hebrew Bible or the, the apologists that are watching this show are free to show me where Jesus is told to us that he will be the Messiah by the prophets of Israel. So that that's number one. So there, but unless you can show me the place, please refrain from making stuff up. Yeah. You, you, you can have whatever opinion you want to have, but you can't make up scripture. There is no place that Moses tells us that Jesus is or will be the Messiah. Right. So. Okay. Okay. Continue on. Yep. Okay. That's where it all begins. That's why, by the way, allow me, my Jewish friends, hang on. Let me sneak ahead for a second. I know you don't believe this, but <clears throat> Yeshua, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. Okay. John 14. If you go to Genesis 3.15 as a Jew, here comes the punch. Here comes the Christmas line, the Christmas theology. God says, I will put warfare, enmity, between you, he's speaking to Satan, and the woman. That's okay, Eve. Okay, let's stop right there. Okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> the, in... In Genesis 3, chapter 3, we begin the chapter, we're first introduced to the serpent, okay? That's first verse, chapter 3, we're introduced to the serpent. The serpent in 3.1 walks on legs. By the way, serpents have vestibular legs today, All right. okay? It's, 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 it's a, a biological fact. So this serpent is, is not a human, but this serpent can speak. God has given this serpent the ability to communicate with humans. By the way, the, the sages teach, and this, this was shocking to me. I don't know if I've ever said this on the show. I don't think I probably ever have. But the, the sages of Israel teach that all this happened in the first day. Uh, Cain and Abel were both born in the first day. Uh, of creation. They did not have to. In other words, um, Adam and Eve uh, had relations and the, <laughs> the child was born instantly. 
and then they had relations again and another child was born. There was no uh, discomfort to Eve. That's why after this fall, she will bear children in pain. That's because it, in other words, Eve didn't have any pain bearing Cain and Abel. So, but the serpent is, is not Satan in the, in the way that, that, that Christians think of it. So all, all the sages of Israel are unanimous in the fact that the serpent is a literal serpent. There is disagreement among them as to whether the serpent was the evil inclination, uh, Satan himself, or the death angel, okay? Even the great sages of Israel, there's, remember we have said before on the show that the sages are not in total agreement on everything in the Hebrew Bible. There are, there are ambiguous texts that are hard to understand, but in, in Christian parlance, Satan is this independent force that God really can't control. He does what he wants to do. So when Jack Hibbs says that the serpent is Satan, uh, what he's basing that on would be unknown to me because there is not agreement among the sages. Uh, I, I think, and, and, and uh, rabbis can correct me on this, I think that probably more people think that the serpent represents the evil inclination, which is kind of, it's not Satan, it's the evil inclination. It's just what we, what we encounter. So, so Mr. Hibbs is uh, running way ahead of the rabbis on this. And remember, viewer and Christian viewer who's going to send me nasty emails and stuff after the show, <clears throat> if the, if the great sages of Israel who received the words of Hashem, and only they received the words of Hashem, if they're not exactly sure who the serpent represents, then Jack Hibbs can't be sure <laughs> of who the serpent represents. So, all right. Right on. Continue on. Go ahead. Okay. Yep. And between your offspring, the seed, Satan's offspring, I'm going to put warfare between your offspring and oh. her. Stop, stop right there. <laughs> okay. Satan doesn't have offspring. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's, that's laughable. Angels, even the, even the Christian Bible says that angels don't have sex. <laughs> so I, I don't know what he means by this, but there is, there is no idea anywhere in the Hebrew Bible that Satan has descendants. And that's the word that's in play here. The word, the Hebrew word is Zerah. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit more as we go on. And William is, again, getting very good at Hebrew, but Zera is translated into English as seed or offspring, but not in Hebrew it's not, it's Zera. And so the word Zera can mean garden seeds that you could plant, but that's got to be in the context. In other words, if I said I'm going, if, if I was a Hebrew speaker and I said I'm going to plant some Zera corn, <laughs> okay, you would know I was planting some seed corn. Mm -hmm. If I said I'm going to visit my Zara who lived 10 miles away from me, then you know I'm going to see my children. You know, that's, that's the context. That's how you figure it out. Satan, even if the serpent represents Satan, he doesn't have any children. And that's, and again, I, I, and Christians who are watching the show, I, I beg of you, please, let's concentrate on not telling me that I'm an idiot, which I really don't care. Let's concentrate on you showing me in the Hebrew Bible where Satan produces children. A little proof would be nice, not theory. A little proof, not not a theory, just mm -hmm. just one. Give me one verse because 
Satan can't produce garden seeds, okay? Uh, Hashem produces garden seeds, and he alone. So concentrate, please, on, on giving me the proof that Satan has children or offspring. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Her offspring. Now, the word in your Bible says seed. Uh, it's where we get the modern day term for us out of the Greek. And even the Latin is sperm or sperma. This is stop, 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 stop. Oh, my word. Okay. Um, if Rabbi Federer's watching, Rabbi Federer's blowing a <clears throat> gasket right now. I've never heard what he said <laughs> before about it meaning sperm. But... Uh, yes, this is so. Okay, this was a joke when I was in the church because, you know, the the preachers that we would get mostly came from Cincinnati Bible College or from Weinbrenner Seminary in Findlay, Ohio. And you had to take so many courses in Greek. Ironically, you never had to take a course of Hebrew. Interesting. Never, yeah, right. never would you take a course of Hebrew. But you had to take at least one year of Greek. And the first word that the preachers always learned was sperma, which is Greek for sperm, our English word sperm, male sperm. Okay, that's all it means. But, you know, when you're 19 years old and you're in a class with other people and the teacher's talking about sperm, why you go, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like the like the first time that you had senior home ec with girls in the class and you That's had funny. to get married to them, you know, we were all like, Oh golly gee whiz, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, but okay. So, so it's irrelevant. Okay. Just again, just think we, we don't have to overthink this. Just think how many Greek speakers were there in the garden of Eden? Pretty sure there was only zero. There were, <laughs> <laughs> just there were just no zero. Greek speakers. Just zero. Yeah. Was was Moses a Greek speaker? Mm. I don't even no. think he liked Greek food. No. <laughs> 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 he he <clears throat> did watch um, my big fat Greek wedding though. <laughs> Any, anyway, so this this is like this is like a the ultimate of a straw man argument, really. What does it matter what Greek says concerning Genesis? It matters what Greek says in the Christian Bible because the Christian Bible is written in Greek. And remember, the the language of commerce in, in Moses, when Moses wrote the Torah, we are told explicitly in the Hebrew Bible, Moses wrote the Torah, the, the language of international commerce was Akkadian. It wasn't Hebrew. Because that's one of the arguments that the that Christians use for the reason why God didn't reveal the Christian Bible in in Hebrew, because well, people didn't speak Hebrew. Well, I got a big I got a big story for you here. The people didn't speak Hebrew in the land of Egypt either. You know what I mean? They spoke Akkadian, and when they com when they did commerce with the other empires, the commerce was generally done in Akkadian. That was the Greek language 1,500 years previous to the Greek language. So uh, Hashem doesn't need... Uh, ask you this, ask yourself this. Would it make sense that since, since Israel sinned and they would be small in number and they would not instantly be the massive nation that could rule the world... Does it make sense that since they're small in number, that Hashem would make their language the greatest language on the earth? Hmm. Uh, he didn't. He, obviously, he didn't. We have history that mm -hmm. Hebrew was never the language of international commerce. You know what? Hebrew is just the language that Hashem picked to reveal his word to. And he did not pick any other nation or language. That, that should be game over in the debate between sure. Jews and Christians. It's unfortunately not because Christians are very adept at squirming out of it. And most people don't pay attention. But if you pay attention, then you just know, well, he didn't do it. So, again, sperma in, in Genesis 3.15, oh my. 
All right. Cont- continue on. Okay. <laughs> seed of man, the seed of male, male DNA, male. See, we have a problem here. <laughs> From woman would come the Messiah of the world. You see, where do you get that from? Stop, Genesis 3, stop, 15. stop, stop, stop. You know, we'll just, it's been a while since I listened to this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, where do we get that from, Mr. Hibbs? He just said that from the woman would come the Messiah. Where do you get that from? Where? Does it say, does the word Mashiach appear anywhere in the third chapter of Genesis? No, that's anointed. That's all it is, anointed. Mm-hmm. There's, there's no such thing as anointings here in the Garden of Eden. Why wouldn't there be anointings in the Garden of Eden? Because Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel are the only four people. What? What does Hashem have to anoint anyone for? Hashem is literally with them. An anointed person <clears throat> is there to do the will of Hashem because we, with our eyes and our ears, generally, almost exclusively, do not see or hear Hashem. We rely on his anointed, his people that he chooses to convey his will and his word to us. Why do you need an anointed person? This is a great question I just came up with for Mr. Hibbs or for or for his apologists that might be listening. Why would Hashem need a Messiah in Genesis in the garden? That's a great question. Hmm. But anyway, so so Mr. Hibbs, again, you're mistaken because there it does not say that Eve would birth the Messiah that does not appear anywhere in the text. So, okay. Okay. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> Look in your Bibles. It's capital S signifying from the Stop! Old Testament. Stop. Capital. Stop. 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 <laughs> I love it. Oh my goodness. Oh, goodness. he just, so, he just, he just hung himself with a short piece of rope. Oh, he hung himself with no rope. <laughs> okay. William. Yes, sir. You're, how many capital letters are there in Hebrew? Let's see. There's one, are, two, there's, three. No, there's zero. I forgot. Yeah, there there's are zero. Zero yeah. Hebrew letters that are capital. A Hebrew letter does not have an upper and a lower case. Yep. Yep. That is that is ridiculous. If you take a King James or an NIV Bible in in Genesis three fifteen, the M of Messiah or the the uh, not, I'm sorry, no, not not in 3.15. In in uh, Daniel 9, the Messiah is capitalized. In the English, yeah, right. In the English. King there's Jimmy no and all the others, thing. yeah. Yeah, there's no such thing as a capital letter. Now, Mr. Hibbs, I'm sure, is a very smart fellow. I, I have no question that he's a smart fellow. But you can be a smart fellow and be untaught ignorant yeah. ignorant yeah. ignorant so yeah not, and like, I, lacking I information yeah yeah lacking information and <clears throat> I, i'm i'm going to i'm going to give mr hibbs a very gracious out that he is simply ignorant of the fact that there is no such thing as a capital letter in hebrew right. so uh, this is this is just very easily seen. You know mm-hmm. what I mean. Um, uh, so go ahead. <laughs> okay. From Moses himself, that the woman, and from the women, from from Eve's line, that eventually from a woman would come uh, divinity. That something would happen regarding. Stop! Stop. <laughs> Stop! Oh my goodness! I don't know what's funny. You're listening to the content or watching you say "Stop! Stop!" <laughs> I love it, my dear friends. Hope this message finds you well. If you like the way this channel is going and the channel has been a blessing to you, please consider supporting the channel by going to the website tanaktalk.com. T a n a c h t a l k dot com. Thank you once again for your time and for supporting Tanak Talk. Shalom.
What? <laughs> 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 okay. Quit uh, snorting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no, that's great. <laughs> I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will pound your head and you will bite his heel. Where does it say divinity? Mm-hmm. Where, where? It, it doesn't say Messiah. It doesn't say divinity. Uh, again, now this, I can't hardly give you a pass of ignorance because uh, can't you just read it and see that it doesn't say anything that you say it's saying? But and if you watch him and a hallmark of all good salesmen, all right, I'm going to say salesmen. Um, and, and I don't mean salesmen with a bad connotation. I really don't. <clears throat> salesmen are able to convince you that you need things, sometimes that you do need, oftentimes that you don't need. I, I deal with salesmen a lot. I, I get their chic, you know. I, I'm going to be very honest with you. There are rabbis on this channel that have a certain amount of salesmanship in their countenance. And again, I don't mean that that's bad. Sure. It's, it's, a, it's a way of communicating that's very effective. When, when Mr. Hibbs says things like, Eve will birth the Messiah and he will be divine— he says it with such gravitas and such authority that I think 95% of people, virtually 100% of Christians, just accept that that's what it says. They don't just open it and read it. Ironically, he reads 315 of Genesis in, in, in his thing. And maybe, and... Self-delusion is a, is a real thing, no question about it, mm-hmm. and the only way you can know if you are self-deluded is if someone points it out to you, by definition. How do you know you're self-deluded? <laughs> Yourself can't know because you're deluded, mm, but yeah, right. a good <laughs> rabbi good point. can point out the error of your way, and then you can get out of that self-delusion and just read the Tanakh, and then you can learn it. But Mr. Hibbs is very good at making it say something that it does not say. And Christian apologists, this again, this is a point where don't say, oh, you're, you're a Jack Hibbs wannabe. I can almost hear them coming now. I can hear what people are going to say. No, I... Number one, no. I don't want to live in Southern California, number one. (laughs) I don't care. I don't know Mr. Hibbs. Mr. Hibbs wouldn't know me from Adam. Just tell me where this text says that the Messiah is coming from Eve's seed and the Messiah will be divine. That's all you got to do. If it's not in the text, then Mr. Hibbs created it himself, and he added it to the Hebrew canon, which is absolutely forbidden. You cannot do that. All right. All right. Okay. So, all right, go okay. ahead. In the woman not having sperm but an egg, that something would happen in, in a woman that from her seed, this is a miracle, you guys. Oh, my. From her seed, watch what would happen. Uh, that from your seed, he shall, watch this, he shall bruise your head. The word in Hebrew is crush. He, whoever the seed is, is a male. So you've got a female <clears throat> and her seed being male. Her offspring is of divine origin. It doesn't involve intercourse or a human male. Uh, did you stop it? <laughs> I, I did. Okay. All right. Okay. It looked like you were chomping at the bit, so uh, I figured I'd probably let well, you say something. I, I mean, I'm trying to. I, I'm. I'm trying to. So, see, this would be a great place where 
if we had if you had the screen divided and we had him yeah. on the screen you he know, is he is on the screen well i mean uh, you know live on the screen right <clears throat> so we know okay let's just go so it it does say I, I will i will absolutely concede i will put enmity between you and the woman okay oh, there you go <laughs> okay <laughs> hey my hair is not as gray Ooh. Uh, yeah. you look, I think you I'm look, a little bit taller. You look young. I'm, I'm a little bit taller also. Wouldn't you say so, William? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> you didn't gain 10 pounds. I say camera puts on 10 pounds, though. So. Yeah, you're good. You're good. <clears throat> okay. I is Hashem. I will put in between, between you and the woman. The you is the serpent, who is a serpent. <clears throat> and between your offspring and her offspring, he will pound your head. You will bite his heel. He is the offspring. Of course, Eve has male offspring. She has about 50% male offspring. The he is not... <sighs> The he is not a a single, what would it be, 3,500 years in the future person who will right. be born. It is her offspring. We can prove this unequivocally because in Genesis 16, uh, verse 10, this is when Hagar... When when Hashem when when Hashem is telling Hagar what is helping, an angel of Hashem said to her, "I will greatly increase your offspring." Mm -hmm. He's speaking to Hagar alone. Alone, that's it. And the exact same thing of Rebecca in twenty four. Um. Uh, verse 60 they blessed Rebecca and said to her our sister may you come to be thousands of myriads and may your offspring inherit the gate of its foes again this is uh, directed to a woman alone does this mean, now in Mr. Hibbs' theology, if he's going to be consistent, and notice that it says offspring like it says in the Hebrew Bible. It doesn't say seed. I believe that in the Christian Bible, this is the only place that Zerah is translated as seed. It, it's translated as offspring in the other places because we don't have to crystallize this. Nobody thinks that Hagar... Uh, bore the Messiah, and nobody thinks that Rebecca bore the Messiah. But the exact same thing is says about both Hagar and Rebecca. Same thing. Their seed. So, okay, Mr. Hibbs. All right. He is, he is, a, he is a pretty good speaker. <laughs> yeah, he is. Okay, so we have absolutely proved that when the Hebrew Bible talks about women having offspring, it does not mean that there is no man involved. And if you're going to be consistent, which we have to be consistent with the with the Bible, then you have to conclude that. There is no other way because the word in 315, the word in 1610, and the word in 2460 is zera. It's the exact same word, no difference. And all three places, it speaks of the woman, Eve, Hagar, and Rebecca, being the mother of Zerah. Okay, it doesn't mean, right. nobody thinks that this means that someday a woman will have a baby with no man involved. That does not comport there is no rabbi 
no Orthodox rabbi would ever teach anything remotely like that. So, okay. All right. There's a divine impregnation of a female to come in the days of Moses to come. He will be divine. Whoever he is, my Jewish friends, whoever he is, Genesis 3.15, Moses said, whoever he is, he's going to crush Satan's head. But Satan mm -hmm. will crush his heel. Stop right there. Yeah, let's stop right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so actual Jewish rabbis and sages throughout the throughout the ages have taught that Satan will try to to get the Jewish people. He will nip at their heels, so to speak, to not observe the Torah. That's what the evil inclination, that's what Satan's role is. Remember, Satan's role is God-ordained. Hashem ordained that this is what he will do. But then homiletically, the sages teach that the Jew can use his head to read and study the Torah and learn the Torah, he can use his head to defeat the evil inclination by being obedient to the Torah. It doesn't, to, to read into this one verse in 315 of Genesis, that what Moses is talking about is Jesus crushing Satan's head, which just, just popped into my head. William, was there ever a place in, well, did Jesus crush Satan's head anywhere in the Christian Bible? He's going to do that when I, he comes back. Oh, when he comes back. Yeah, when he comes back. I, I you know, I'm trying to think, and smart people who are watching this show they correct me and i appreciate it i really do so this is one of those tangents that pops into my head i know that satan will be bound for what in the in the christian bible satan will be bound for a thousand years then he gets released again and then he gets cast into the lake of fire I am struggling right now with a time in the Christian Bible where Satan's head gets crushed. Mm, right. I, I really, and uh, people who watch the show, please feel free to comment. If you can come up with it, yeah. come up with it. Because what the, and just the very, the very uh, literal teaching of this passage is that, <laughs> People walk on two feet, serpents crawl on the ground, and almost every human being is just a little bit queasy around snakes. Uh, you know, most people, or some people, very few will think, oh, see. But my grandma used to crush garter snakes with her bare feet regularly because the bottom of my grandma's feet were like shoes. And it was one of the grossest things I ever saw was when she would crush tomato worms and garter snakes with her bare feet. <laughs> and there was a lot of them around. But so very literally in the text, men, humans, crush serpents' heads. And where is a snake? What's the most bitten place on a, on a person? Probably be the lower leg. I mean, that's, right. where, that's where snakes are. So, but I mean, my gosh, how to, you know what, if Moses would have taught that Jesus will crush Satan's head, Moses would have said, Jesus will crush Satan's head. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't have done it through this. And again, there's 1500 years. Well, there's more than that. There's really... To over there's 2,500 years of of 
Hebrew, remember Abraham's the first Hebrew, but you know Noah is kind of a you know it, going back. In other words, Noah Noah didn't have the scripture in front of him, but Noah knew what happened in the garden. How did he know? Well, Adam told him. You know, if if Noah would have been told by Adam, oh, what God was really telling us back there in the garden is that there's going to be a Messiah named Jesus and he's going to crush Satan's head. Do you think Noah would have passed that on and Abraham would have known about it? I would think. Abraham doesn't know anything about Jesus crushing Satan's head. Yep. No sages of Israel know anything about Jesus crushing Satan's head. Jack Hibbs knows about Jesus crushing Satan's head. But Jack Hibbs knows nothing about the oral law and the or oral the law Hebrew. and the oral law and, and the Hebrew and everything from the Nikudot has been meticulously, carefully handed down because they are important. So mm. something like you yes. said of such great importance about, you know, Jesus crushing the head of Satan, that is so important. It's based on everybody's eternity, according to Christianity. Right. That's yeah. the one thing that they left out. You're yeah, right. they just left yeah. that part out. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, when he said, you know, one of the questions, oh, I, um, my life is getting a little bit exciting, but <laughs> <laughs> one of the questions that I am hoping will get posed to a major Christian apologist is, in the, in the Christian Bible, I remember one time you, um, Cold asked me, what's the most egregious thing in the Christian Bible? And I said, where supposedly Jesus says, no man comes unto the Father except mm, through me. Right. I'm the only way. So if Jesus is the only way to the Father, he's the only access you have to the Father, why wouldn't the children of Israel have been informed of that? Right, right. I mean, that's a that's a great question because supposedly this only got revealed to Greek speaking people um, 3,500 years later after the fall in the garden. That's, that's it. That's the only time it got revealed. So what, so all the people that lived before this great revelation, this is the real revelation. Everybody that lived before that, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they, they don't have any access to the father because they don't have Jesus. And so that's a good question. Why would he have waited that long to reveal this? Like Mr. Hibbs said in the thing. And that's what the New Testament says. I again I don't believe Jesus ever said that. Mm -hmm. I'm 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 nearly well, I'm nearly positive that Jesus never said that, but it was stated for him. So in the right. book of John, it uh, would be what, what is that? John fourteen, I believe. So no. John, the highest Christological book, John. Can you imagine in the book of Mark, Jesus saying something like that? <laughs> no, uh, no way would the book of Mark ever contain such a quote as that. But by the time we get to John, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. John, Jesus, not just a he's not just a son of God. He is God. Yep. Right. So. All right. Yep. Carry on. Go ahead. Yep. Moses said, a divine one will come from human no. <laughs> origins of a woman. Not what Mo Moses said, the divine one will come. From, I, got, I got it. I got it. From I just, your seed. I want to hear yeah, it. Yeah, go back through yeah, that again. Not a man. Um, just, Moses said, a divine one will come from human origins of a woman not a man a but where where? Did, where did moses ever say that where did moses say that please again don't call me names tell me where moses said a divine one will come from a human woman alone just tell me that's just blowing my mind i, I mean I've, I've, it's, i have it's blowing heard... my mind so many mis no. misquotes uh, in one short session as much as I oh, have in this video. Oh, my goodness, yes. Uh. This is like, this is worse than really, I mean, I'm sure the apologists that we've had on the show before <clears throat> probably believe this stuff, but mm -hmm. they weren't so 
um, yeah, yeah. brave as to actually start stating it. <laughs> right. All right, here you go. <laughs> yeah. From so, human but... origins of a woman, not a man, a woman, male, not a male, female, not a male, but from a female. In fact, excluding a male, but from a human female. Mm. The origin oh, will be wow. divine. The seed, capital S. Capital. I'm glad he said that because I, would I wouldn't have known otherwise. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whoever he is, he will destroy Satan. Can Moses destroy Satan? No. Any of the prophets? Nope. No one's going to destroy Satan. Satan is an agent no of the creator. No one's going to destroy Satan. This is so... So anywhere... there, There's no place in the Christian Bible where Jesus destroys Satan. Again, I don't think. But mm. but remember, we, we've learned this. We, we learned this, that uh, Isaiah 45, verse 7, Hashem created evil. He created the evil. He created Satan. And he created Satan to tempt us because without temptation, there is no obedience. Mm. That is very clearly taught by the sages of Israel. And so there is no... Now, it's, it's a good mind game, and, I, and I've heard this mind game, is what is Satan's role in the world to come when everybody knows who Hashem is? Uh, you know, that's that's yeah, that's a good question. That is actually a really good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, we're we're not really told, you know. We're you, Hashem doesn't tell us. He doesn't even tell his prophets certain things because he's not doing anything with it. You know what I mean? If 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 Hashem is going to make a move or introduce, he tells his prophets. But I don't think that any human prophet, even with divine help, could probably ever uh, inculcate all of the knowledge that Hashem has. <laughs> mm, right. you, you just, even a divinely inspired brain would probably explode, you know. So, so, but it would be absolute conjecture to to try to figure out really hardly anything that will happen to Hasatan in the world to come. You know, we're just, just not told. Mm -hmm. um, he could just, maybe, you know, this is, this could be it. Maybe Satan just, and probably is, he just, he's a really good guy. He just got a really bad job. <laughs> he gets, oh, he gets promoted. <laughs> he gets promoted. Yeah. So, um, I got a great idea for a segment of dirty jobs on TV. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> You can go along with Satan for the day. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> so, okay. I, I have a okay. I, I, have, I have a better oh. one. You could go along with the you, preachers of your choice for the day. Whew. Yeah. Anyway, okay. All right. Okay. So this this one is talking about that, um, yeah. Jews, That's pretty Jews, much the end of that one, Jews hiding the Bible. And this is only uh, okay. Yeah. This is this is clip. the one that really sparked my interest at first, and this is. This is very anti-Semitic, very anti-Semitic. Um, and I, I hope that Pastor Hibbs doesn't realize how anti-Semitic it is. But we'll, we'll listen, we'll give a quick listen in here. So. Now, I know many of my Jewish friends will not even look or listen. You have been told by your rabbis, you cannot read the New Testament. It is forbidden. Isn't it interesting, by the way, they also say that there are Old Testament chapters and books that are forbidden to you as well. A little bit of a test. Oh, my friends, please, I hope you, I hope you haven't tuned, 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 us, tuned, me, tuned us off yet. Isn't it interesting that all of the forbidden scriptures that your rabbis tell you not to read, every single one of them deal with the Messiah coming to rescue you and save you? Mm. So how how many uh, how many things is he referring to? Because the only one I ever heard of was uh, Isaiah fifty three. But uh, Isaiah fifty three uh, is the only one. See, this is why I was really i I really spent a lot of time trying to reach him. I really did. I even told Shannon Noonsen in a text message 
that I thought I had succeeded, <laughs> and I was virulently wrong. Um, so regarding what, the Isaiah 53, uh, and the thing that I keep telling every time somebody asks me about that is, um, Isaiah 53, uh, Christians should hope that they never read that because that would disprove Jesus as yeah. being the Messiah on on more than one level, more than two levels, more than five levels, uh, eight yes, or ten yes. different points that completely prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus could not have been the Messiah. So why would right. the Jews actually hide that from the Jewish people? That's just that, that would be that makes a no great sense. Question. That makes no sense. That would be one of the ones. So I I in good faith reached out and to. So first I got to talk to the prayer request people at Mr. Hibbs's church, and they were very kind. All, everybody that I actually talked to was, was very kind. And I found out um, <clears throat> that they were deacons and elders, basically, that basically are at their house. And it's like uh, when my wife used to do the telenursing, you know, you called the hospital and she was on duty at our house and she would take a call and, you know, the, the child has a temperature of 101. What should we do? And my wife would tell her what to do. So that's kind of what these guys were. They're, they're mostly geared to take prayer requests, not to, to take theological questions. So right. I, I got through several of those guys making a, making a plea to have Pastor Hibbs because initially my my concern was that there are Jewish rabbis who are teaching their own people not to read parts of the scripture. We need to know who those rabbis are because they are in error. Uh, you know, and okay, rabbis are human beings. There can be rabbis who are in error. Maybe they had something happen in their life and they don't want, and, but I've even talked to some of my, my, closer personal friends who are Christians who I have pretty meaningful debates with from time to time. And I, one of, one of them is a, a, a very important, a former very important businessman in Bluffton, Indiana. And he even said, well, how, they can take their Bibles home with them. Right. And I said, yeah, it's not like in King's James, Eng King James England, when the Bible was literally chained to the pulpit because the Bible in King James England was the most valuable thing in the whole church because, you know, books were very expensive. But and so he said, well, how would rabbis forbid reading of anything in the Bible? I said, great question. How could that ever be? That can't be. So but I, well, I was taking Mr. Hibbs at his word that he knew personally rabbis who were forbidding their people, their Jewish people, from reading parts of the Bible. I'm I'm nearly positive that Mr. Hibbs does not know any of those rabbis, yep. and he is going from from what it, and I I went over this and amazingly his his associate pastor that I that I got to talk to did know what the half Torah was until I talked to. Until I talked to the associate pastor, nobody that I talked to knew what the Tanakh was. Nobody. They, you know, I had to tell them what that was. And this is pretty typical. Yeah. William, when you right. were in the when you were in the church, did you know what a Tanakh was? The only thing I knew about Tanakh back then was missionary work is to knock on people's doors. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of or, it before. Or or to tell or to do Tanakh jokes. Tanakh yeah. knock jokes. <laughs> Tanakh. We can do that. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> There's some of those. <laughs> oh, there was a snort. Man, you, 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 <laughs> I think I think in some of the apocryphal books there are some Tanakh yeah. knock jokes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, anyway, that's great. Anyway, they they so I get to I get to the to the associate pastor and he knows what the Haftarah is. And the half Torah is simply when Antiochus, Antiochus Epiphanes forbid the Jewish people from reading the Torah in their public meetings. Uh, even I, I, I'm positive that Antiochus Epiphanes couldn't even keep them from reading their Tanakh in their house, for heaven's sakes. But they couldn't read they couldn't read it at their assemblies. 
And so they substituted places in the in the prophets and the writings that kind of correlated with the with the readings in the Torah. They were allowed to read those. Isn't it interesting that the the religion that is really not true <clears throat> emperors forbid them from just reading it. <laughs> well, if it's not true, what do you care if people read it for? Right. Uh, you know, obviously, innately and internally, I think everyone on earth, including Gentiles, in the core of their being, kind of understands that the Torah is the real word of God. I, there, is a, there is a Jewish teaching on that, and I think the teaching is that when you're in your mother's belly, and this might be just Jewish people, I'm not sure, but I think it's everybody, that the Torah is presented to you when you're in utero, but that you forget it right. when you're born. <clears throat> right. Is that true? Is that true? Okay. All yeah. right. I'm not. I'm not misremembering that. Yeah. It was, yeah. So that's that's, yeah, that's so, the thought. Yeah. So that's why when you have an actual Torah. You are holding absolutely divinely inspired, very important words, and and you should treat them as such. I, I never set a book on top of any of my Torahs. I, I never do. And I don't know why. No no rabbi ever told me right. not to do that. I just I just make sure that I don't set anything on it. You know what I mean? I literally just said the same, but actually I, I did. I, look what book I put um, up in front of. <laughs> so i usually don't either i just i guess in a rush yeah. i'll leave it there but i'm, I'm kind of that yeah. way too that's why this thing stays yeah. up here this humash stays yeah. here by itself yeah. all the time yeah. and then rushing today i was like oh uh, uh, and i didn't, uh, wasn't paying attention uh, uh, so but yeah typically i don't either that's uh, that's just I, I, out of respect i think is why you know right but in when all the years i spent in the church I never did that with my King James Bible. Right. My gosh, I would put my kid. We'd come home from church. I put my King James. I'd throw my clothes on top of it. If you would I have mo most out. most Christians have their King James Bible. Dedicated Christians will have their Bible in the bathroom, so it's bathroom reading material, and that's forbidden to do that. You know, with <laughs> with, with the holy words of God, you you can't do that. Oh yeah, you know? that's true. Yeah. So, but but so when. Mm. The, so Isaiah 53 is not included in half Torah readings. Right. Okay. The, not because they forbid it to be, just it didn't get picked. No. Uh, I mean, there are all kinds of messianic uh, passages that did get included in the half Torah reading. To be clear, you, know? you mentioned that you mentioned the idea of it earlier. You said that they knew what the half Torah was, but they may not actually know because. As you're talking now, that's the whole point. The, the Haftorah had to do with with parts of these books that actually had to do with the weekly Torah portion. They were connected Correct. in some way. They were connected so, in some and if, way. And Isaiah yes. 53 doesn't really connect anywhere in any of the Torah portions. It doesn't connect. So, no, it doesn't yeah. connect. It's just, but it's not, there is no rabbi again if there's someone watching the show or watching the channel that has a conduit to Jack Hibbs, please let let us know who the rabbis are and how the heck are they forbidding their congregants from reading anything in the Torah or the Tanakh. Yeah. I, I uh, please we we would like to know because the the real implication of the podcast that he did is it's just like the it's just like the uh, you know when when Jesus is crucified who is it that knows who Jesus really was is it a is it a a rabbi steeped in generations of intense Torah learning is it a righteous Jewish person who is keeping the Torah every day of his life? No, it's a, it's a Roman centurion <laughs> who probably cannot read Hebrew, who right. would not know who Moses was, who would not know anything about the Hebrew Bible, but, oh, he really gets it. He knows who Jesus is. Uh, yep. it, and, and Pastor Hibbs, I think, is 
is kind of participating in the same line of reasoning. You know, the rabbis are keeping their own people from really knowing what it says and really knowing who the Messiah is. That's, and it's, I'm not even making that assertion against Mr. Hibbs. I must, well, a little bit, some of it he should know, but yeah. I'm asserting that he is very ignorant of the Hebrew Bible and very ignorant Definitely. of Definitely. what the rabbis have taught for 3,500 years. Right. That's my assertion. His assertion is that the rabbis really know, but they want to keep their people in the dark. Yeah. They want to keep them in bondage to their own selfish interests, which... I mean, most rabbis I know are not wealthy people. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the oh, there's not a single rabbi I know who is a wealthy person. Um, mo and I don't know about Mr. Hibbs. I have no clue, but I do know in general the the mega church pastors are typically. And again, I don't know anything about Mr. Hibbs' finances, but they're typically pretty well off. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, a Joel Olstein type, um, Megachurch, you know, those, yeah. those guys are very well off. Um, and they own a lot of property that their church, that their church owns. And so anyway, I think, so, oh man, I'm, do you I'm want like, to oh, go ahead and, going. should we go ahead and play this last clip uh, right now? Yeah. Play the last clip. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, let me put it back on screen. If you're a Jew, it's, you're going to get a bone stuck in your throat or you're going to wait find I, out that you have did a I start pebble that? in your shoe Hold on, let me start over so to again. speak Here we go. yeah that's i think i missed a word or two hang on i don't think you did if you're a jew oh you're right i didn't huh interesting yeah it's, yeah you're going to get a bone stuck in your throat mm, mm, yeah. mm, or you're going to yeah. find out that you have a pebble in your shoe so to speak mm. right yeah, 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 yeah. Genesis 3.15 to the Jew is what we would say uh, in English is a conundrum. It is a revelation of truth that demands that you accept it one way and one way only. I love this. God who speaks in truth doesn't speak with options. I mean, listen, he gives you the option to choose him or not. That's about it. <laughs> He's the God of all truth. He's not the God of multiple choices. I'm a little unclear, and I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt over what I think he means by this. I, I, I think he means that since, since the Jew doesn't know what Genesis 3.15 really means that they are basically going to choke to death oh, because, because they, can't they don't it. understand it. Now, gotcha. I may be reading too much into it. That but would make sense. As, yeah. That's because getting the bone stuck in your throat means uh, uh, I can't talk. Uh, Cause correct. I, have I can't to say. talk. Cause he says it in the context yeah. of them not understanding the divine truth. And there's only one way to understand Genesis three fifteen, And of course that is with Mr. Hibbs inserting words that do not exist right. and capitalizing letters that do not exist anywhere in the Hebrew Bible. Yep. I will never change Jack Hibbs mind. I know that one day Hashem will change his mind Definitely. because one day everyone will worship the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob in truth in the world to come. What I hope is that the people who have seen this podcast by Mr. Hibbs, including the people at his church, will just come to like a seminal uh, eureka that maybe everything he says is not grounded in truth. I got a I got an email from his secretary um, uh, the reason that he couldn't respond to me is because God is using Pastor Hibbs in so many ways. He just can't respond to emails. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I, I'm sure that's fine. You know, um, I'm. I don't know for sure, but I I do a lot of work. I think I probably work just as much as Mr. Hibbs does, and I respond to a lot of emails, and I don't have anybody to respond to them for me. I know Mr. Hibbs does. They all. They all have people who respond to emails, 
And basically their people are to kind of, if they can't respond, they bump it up to the next layer and then yeah. ultimately it gets up to him, you know. Um, the, the very popular rabbis on this channel, I know they have that problem of, you know, we can't respond to every email. But I'm pretty sure that if, if a person accused, say, Rabbi Skobek of, of saying something about a Christian that, you know, he hoped that Christians would choke on a bone in their throat or whatever— I'm sure that Rabbi Fedro would address that email, you know, yeah, and would right. say, oh, no, that, that was never my intention. I, you yeah, know, I right. wouldn't have done that. I only meant that Greg McBride would choke on a bone in his throat <laughs> <laughs> because then it would slow him down. <laughs> it'd be slower. Slower. It'd be slower, it'd be slower, slower ride, slower McBride. Ride. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, I want to get to be the slowest ride. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but, but right. you know, so I hope that maybe like a secretary uh, for Mr. Hibbs or in his office would see this and then just realize because a person like Mr. Hibbs, any person, when you get to a position of elevation like he is and when you have complete command of a organization, it is so easy to become enveloped by that and to not be humble, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, and to, and then to, to pick on people like, like rabbis that can't really respond. There's, there's no rabbi on this channel. Well, maybe one or two that would have any type of reach, so to speak, to, to actually be able to confront Mr. Hibbs in person I can't do it. You can't do it. I, you know, I'm not going to drive all the way to Southern California and sit yeah. in his church. You know, I, you know, I, I can't do that. Um, I, I would like to. Um, I, I don't think he probably teaches a Sunday school class that I could attend. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, um, you know, but so yeah. anyway, just for. When people say that debates are not for the debaters, they're for the people who watch it. I, I completely agree with that mm -hmm. um, because Pastor Hibbs' mind will be changed only by Hashem, yep, that's true. not by me, that's true. not by Rabbi Singer or Federer or Skobek or Malat. Right. They, that's who will change his mind. And until that happens, he gets to spread this. And he has like 600,000 or more viewers mm, wow. on his channel, you know, because he's, he's very prolific. So... Um, oh, I want to leave you with one. I, I'm I'm not so much going with the quotings now. I want to. This is one of my questions. Uh, uh, again, we're gonna uh, we're gonna have to address Septuagint again next week um, because there are still uh, a lot of people that write in the chat and give me emails about how great the Septuagint is and all this, and I. I want to once again use the Christian sources, F.F. Uh, F. Bruce, uh, Josephus, um, Jerome. I want to give you clear teaching about Septuagint because you cannot run and hide behind the Septuagint. I got in the chat a couple, three weeks ago, I got lambasted a couple times about, again, what an idiot I am because I didn't realize that Matthew is quoting from the Septuagint, you dolt. He didn't read a Hebrew Bible, he read the Septuagint. Wow. Um, so I want to address that again. But for to, to sign off on today's show, we are explicitly told in the Hebrew Bible, read from Ezekiel, what is read from Ezekiel 40 through 49? And you get this wonderful, wonderful picture of the temple that will stand forever. It explicitly says it will stand forever. Ezekiel is a prophet of God. He, there, there's no Christian that disagrees with that. And then in, 
in Revelation. Chapter 21 of Revelation, verse 22. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Okay, now one thing that you have got to do, if the if the Hebrew Bible is changed by something, you cannot consider it to be from Hashem. You cannot. I'm sorry, Christian, you can't. The author of Revelation, which is attributed to John, it doesn't say John who, doesn't, it's John, from 40 through 49 of Ezekiel and other places in the Hebrew Bible, the temple is explicitly described windows, doors, porches, stairways, where it sets, where it's at. This temple that is seen in Revelation, or this lack of a temple in Revelation, should tell you exactly what you need to know. You cannot trust the authors of the Christian Bible. They did not write the word of Hashem. They wrote a different word. Yeah. If you disagree... That's fine, but please, when you disagree, tell me where I'm wrong. Yeah. Don't don't just call me names. Yeah. Right. I don't really mind the name. Some of actually some of the names that I get called are kind of funny. To be honest with you, yeah. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> that's. Funny. I think you know I could probably I could probably sit down at McDonald's with this guy and probably have an okay time. To be honest with you, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so. Well, all right, my friend. Well, that's going to be <laughs> a wrap you. on this one. I'm glad we did that. Uh, that's been one of those clips I had seen before. Um, I didn't realize it until we did our show, but that's yeah, that's pretty wild. Yeah. So yeah. a big shout out so. to uh, to Brooke Reese there for her uh, having yes. this discuss Thank on you. her program. Uh, yep. I will try to where's where's my link information for her. Sorry. I'm not going to edit this. I'm just going to look at my email. Isn't that the name of the guy in Encino Man? Link. 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 No, Link. 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 No. Didn't you? They, haven't you they, ever seen Encino Man? Yes, but oh, you. But look, they, they they gave him a full name, and it was Link. Oh, they Link. Did? Link was short for Linkovich Chamovsky. Oh. Oh, are you serious? Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. I, wow. I, I, I've seen that movie probably you a dozen times. You talk about times. dropping the knowledge bomb here. <laughs> wow. Yes. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Uh, so, yeah. I was By the way, get... we had that planned. William got to look that up beforehand. He didn't oh. remember that. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay, my friend. Thank you, Greg. It's been fun as usual. Very informative. Thank right. you for your time. And y'all, be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to you. YouTube channel, turn on all notifications, and we will see you again soon. Shalom, everybody. Peace. Shalom, my dear friends. Hope this message finds you well. If you like the way this channel is going and the channel has been a blessing to you, please consider supporting the channel by going to the website, tanakhtalk.com, T-A-N-A-C-H-T-A-L-K.com. Thank you once again for your time and for supporting Tanakh Talk. Shalom. Shaifa, we have